Welcome back. Well, if you or your shop or your race team are looking for a way to find out what's going on inside your engine, look no further. I have the answer right here. I'm with Joe. And Joe, I tell you what, you do have a solution that I believe many shops are looking for. You're going to be able to examine exactly what's going on in their engine, on their engine, and be able to give them some in-depth data that they've never had before. Tell us a little bit about your company. Well, Big C sells a line of digital microscopes uh, called the Dynalite Digital Microscope, and it can be used as a handheld inspection device and or a dedicated stand-mounted inspection device. And uh, it's extremely versatile with a variable magnification range, dependent completely upon working distance. And I noticed that some of the models have built-in lights, so you can go in ultra close-up to find out exactly what's going on. That's true. The, each scope has a built-in lights, which can be turned on or off. Occasionally, you want to use it without our built-in lights. But uh, yeah, that's true. Now, some of the features that you have with your different scopes really allow you to not only see what's going on, to, but to see it ideally. Maybe uh, polarization and different features to give us the best look at what we're trying to capture. Well, there's a range of scopes, and there's a price range associated with that range of scopes having to do with the different features that the software and the hardware provide. So polarization is one of those features that I believe is very important. It helps control glare. And with that glare, without that glare in the equation, we can actually see what's going on. Now, you're examining a spark plug here. I've never seen a spark plug so large. Uh, now, I can tell by my trained eye, really not a whole lot going on here. I don't know how many burns this one's been, been through. But, you know, from a spark plug, you can really tell what's going on inside your engine. That's true. And this is an example of where polarization come in handy. If you watch this image here, this is a non-polarized image. And you'll see quite a bit of glare. And if I wanted to read the uh, heat signature, for instance, on the ground strap, it makes it a little easier if I polarize it. And now you can see some definite uh, areas of heat concentration, etc. Now this is a variable magnifying device. And at this particular working distance, I can actually get a little closer here, Bill. If you'll watch, I just manually focus by turning this dial. It'll go out of focus for a second, but it will come back in. And now we're looking at over 200x magnification. And if I back it off, now I'm getting probably 50x right around there. So you can control exactly how much magnification you need. Yeah, uh, basically it has to do with working distance. Now the working distance factor begins inside the scope. So at this particular distance, which I call zero, it will come into focus twice, and this is where we get our higher magnifications. If I wanted to, for instance, get a larger field of view, less magnification, what I would do is simply increase that working distance and then refocus. And there you have it. And this is uh, a consistent characteristic of all of our scopes. That is amazing. So, you know, this is even better data than I thought. You know, just walking by, you have some amazing illustrations of exactly what you can do. But we went right in, and with the polarization turned on, I saw carbon buildup that I didn't see before. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there are other ways to get that effect. For instance, you can turn my lights off and then just apply external lighting, and you can, you can get some of the same effects. It depends on whether you're going to have it in the stand or a hand mount or uh, use it as a handheld. But uh, I like polarization, but it's definitely not necessary in all applications. Now, this is digital, and with this, we can also record. You mentioned maybe take some stills sure. and even a time lapse. Yes, uh, there's many ways to capture a still image. I'll show you here. This is all live image here. And what I can do is simply double click on the screen, and you'll see down here. In the lower left hand column, this here is the captured image. Or I have a little camera icon, you can simply click on that, and there again, another captured image. If I wanted to take a video, I simply go to the video camera icon, click on it, and now this is actually a live video being recorded, and then I click on it again to stop it, and then I go into a video file open it up, and here's a video I just taken. So it's very simple. The software's all free, by the way. 
The software comes with the purchase of a microscope, and uh, it's very intuitive and easy to learn. That is amazing. Some of our scopes uh, have a calibratable measurement feature as well. So for instance, I could measure any two-dimensional aspect of the spark plug that I care to. And since it's calibratable, we can uh, demonstrate repeatability. Repeatability, and we can keep a log and really see a progression of uh, maybe a feature we don't care for in our engine, et cetera, and really have an idea of what's going on in, inside that engine. Uh, it's great for detecting cracks, uh, general surface inspection, including uh, paint finishes, for instance. Uh, and uh, cracks, welds, it's very good for welds, welding inspection. That is amazing. Now, analog, can we go take a look at that? Yes. Now, Joe, this is what initially caught my attention. Coming by here, you can see the movement of a watch. Just amazing. Uh, well, what we do is we demonstrate our analog variety of scopes. So we have our digital and then we have our analog. The composite analog simply plugs into the RCA jack of your, in the back of your TV set. No software required. It does require a separate power supply, which we provide. And the advantage of analog is that it gives us a higher frame rate. So we're able to observe objects in motion at real time. So this would come in handy in a machine vision application, for instance, or anytime you're looking at anything in motion, including things uh, like fuel spray patterns, for instance. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, some timing issues. But as well as, uh, this would come in handy for when you're welding or soldering, any time where you're using a tool under a magnifying device and you want to have real time, you don't want any lag. They are less expensive, generally speaking. That is amazing. So this, too, is really going to provide a solution out there that even I hadn't thought about before. Now, Joe, with the quality that you've shown me and the abilities that we'll have, this has to be expensive. Uh, actually, Bill, it's not. Uh, this is a very affordable product. We have a price range of $150 to just a little over $500. And uh, that includes free software, free updates, no licensing fees, so you can share the product on any number of machines that you'd like to. With that said, Joe, right now I know you have to have the attention of all of our viewers out there. What's the best way for them to learn more about all of your scopes? Well, uh, other than trade shows, uh, you can visit our website at www.bigc.com and uh, we have a very extensive website with video tutorials, uh, a library of uh, images, and a detailed description of a variety of applications. Easy enough. Well, Joe, thank you so much for being on. Thank you very much.